and we have no guests today. We have cleared the decks because I want to open the phones up and take your phone calls and talk about the state of the world as we hurdle towards 2014. Also, I got a call uh, from my father about an hour and a half ago that one of my dear cousins uh, passed away, was found uh, deceased in his bed this morning, probably of pneumonia. And so I'm sure David Knight will be filling in one day this week for the funeral. I know my family's probably listening out there because they listen every day. My heart goes out to you and to Peter, who I know is in a better place. And uh, he will be sorely missed and was a very sweet soul and a dear heart. And so I give my condolences to my family in East Texas. My uh, cousin grew up when he was little down in Guatemala, where my uncle was working, my other cousins and my aunt. And uh, he had, when they had a construction crew putting a new roof on, had climbed up a ladder when he was two and a half and fallen off and hit his head. But then he'd been somewhat, you know, cognitively impaired since then. But uh, I guess the best way to go is in your sleep. So that's a blessing. So I love you, Peter, and I'll see you soon. We'll be right back. Stay with us. The info war is straight ahead. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at InfoWars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at InfoWars.com slash show. And I want to again open the phones up for first-time callers, people that have never been able to get involved on the radio show slash TV show. As we simulcast TV as well, folks, at InfoWarsNews.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. I want to open the phones up for your questions. If you want to ask yours truly, Alex Jones, a question, or if you have a comment or uh, a disagreement uh, or... A question we would love to hear from you. The only thing you're not allowed to do is to call in and compliment me and tell me how great I am. Because I think you're great. We're all on the same page fighting for freedom. We're trying to wake up those that aren't awake. We've got new listeners every millisecond tuning in who are thinking, you know, what in the world is this? How un American this guy's talking about freedom and trying to keep the government small. This is dangerous. I'm, being a little bit sarcastic here, folks. The point is we're going to open the phones up today and take your phone calls on a host of issues. And when you hear one caller hang up, that's your chance to call in to the show. And so here is the toll-free number. I also want to hear from listeners on solutions. How do we beat a scientific dehumanization control grid, a scientific dictatorship, in the technocrats' own words, how do we beat that? States' rights, homeschooling, buying local, uh, not complying with unconstitutional laws, uh, being part of juries and nullifying tyranny, joining the police force because you know you're a good person, uh, running for city council, uh, creating your own media operation, promoting free and independent press that promotes freedom, not infighting with each other. If you agree with somebody on 60, 70 percent of things, and if the glo and 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 if the person isn't batting for the globalist, you need to work with them and put aside old beefs and try to come together. I mean, I've never been an infighter, but I've really gotten good about forgiving people, turning the other cheek, and 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 helping others that are doing a good job, even if they've been jealous and envious in the past and attacked me and made stuff up. I have forgiven them. And, it, and it's actually helped many of those people grow up as well. My example of leadership, and I'm not saying I'm some special person or on a high horse. Many of you have known this since you were little kids. I'm just now learning it. And so I'm here, if you're tuning in for the first time, to promote the American system of the Bill of Rights Constitution based on common law that is Levitical, and also Northern and Western European in derivation. There's a reason Northern and Western Europeans adopted uh, Levitical law in the last thousand years or so. It was because it was almost identical to their common law they already had. 
And so you ask, what is our common law? It, it is, it is Judeo-Christian. Uh, so many people say, we're not Judeo-Christian, we're Christian. Well, our law is Judeo-Christian. And I don't mean the modern Judeo, which is actually under the Babylonian captivity or under the uh, Khazars out of Kazakhstan and out of what is northern Georgia and you know that whole area of, 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 of Eastern Europe into Central Asia. I'm talking about the, the, the Israelites of Moses' time and that common law. That common law is the same common law in, in, in most cultures of the world. It, and, and that's what we're leaving. The Ten Commandments, ladies and gentlemen, and the other 500 laws and injunctions and orders, all of which make total sense, are being thrown down the toilet. And all of the curses that the Bible tells you will come if you don't follow this law, it's all happening like clockwork. And even if you don't believe in God, the devil, good and evil and all that, the point is, is that cultures developed laws that made sense and created stable societies of due process and of being honorable. And if you follow those codes, your civilization prospers. If you don't follow those codes, you're destroyed. And so I am a follower of the Anglo-Saxon common law, which was codified in Magna Carta in 1215, which was then expanded under the edicts of 1776, the edicts against the king, that, that we, the free humans, stand against your tyranny. And we declare our names, our family, our blood, our treasure, our honor, 100% on the altar of liberty. We're doubled down, all in, committed, and we're not giving up ever and they won because no one that refuses to give up can be defeated unless you kill everyone and the romans did that sometimes they would kill everyone in scores of civilizations and then in case somebody hid out in the woods or the caves they would then poison the ground with high-powered salt arsenic you name it uh, the chinese would do that too when they conquered a group that hadn't submitted uh, they would poison things with, uh, well, the first black powder bombs were jacketed in uh, arsenic. They would even bomb people with chemical weapons. The point is there's really nothing new under the sun, just more advanced systems of it. And uh, you can't defeat the Vietnamese no matter how much military power you had because they weren't going to give up. You can't defeat the 1776ers because it didn't matter if you had the greatest military the world had ever seen that could beat any military in the world. These people wouldn't give up. They wouldn't give in. Resistance is victory. And Americans and people of the West have given up our culture, given up our birthright, given up everything, and bought into the plastic, phony culture. And now, like opening a window, a portal in a submarine, we're being flooded. Or you can reverse the analogy to the spaceship opening a pod bay door and releasing the atmosphere. You're going to be dead in seconds. We have opened the portal door. We are now depressurizing, ladies and gentlemen. And in the scale of history, a decade is like a millisecond. And we're in the millisecond right now where the shields are going down, all the prosperity is going out the window, and all the ancient forms of oppression are now manifesting themselves. You can give them whatever fancy name you want, put a political label on it, it's gangster-run government by select combines, and everyone else is being enslaved and impoverished as a tool of control. And then in short order, the gangs and the combines, the monopolies, the oligopolies that have combined forces to bring in their world hegemonic rule, their corporate rule, one ring to rule them all and in the darkness bind them. Now all of those that were in the councils of world government who combined forces to bring in the world government are now beginning to tear each other apart and prepare for war with each other. They've done their job of dumbing down humanity, neutralizing people, putting the general population in a trance. Now the power structure is moving into their end game. And believe me, it's not going to be pretty. And everyone will see the fruits of tyranny 
and then everyone will start resisting it. And the system has premeditatedly prepared for all of that and even set up military industrial complex economies of scale to profit from the insurrections and civil wars that they themselves are instigating. In fact, a friend sent me a text that I meant to read on air last week. Let me find it right now and actually read this uh, famous quote of uh, jurisprudence to everyone on air, if I'm able, able, to, able to find it here in my stack. Let me keep looking here. Maybe I should do this, do this during the break. Trying to keep track of all of this. You know what I'll do? During the break, I will actually find, uh, find the quote and read it on air when we come back. And then I'm going to give the phone number out and take phone calls, uh, as many phone calls as I can. But if you ask me complex questions, I'll tend to give complex answers and then never get to the next person. Just, just make your point or ask your question, and I'll try to go to the next person. In fact, I'd like to hear your solutions. We were talking to listeners last night, callers, about solutions, and it was just a lot of really great points. So also, make your point, ask your question, but throw in your idea of a solution. We'd like to hear from you. First-time callers again. 800-259-9231, 1-800-259-9231. What do we have uh, to cover here today? Here are just some of the headlines up on Infowars.com. Get ready to pay more online. Supreme Court refuses to hear internet tax case. The lower court said tax the internet, so you know what that means, tax the internet. DHS Googling travelers. Before they enter the United States, that's up on Infowars.com, also on the right-hand side of DrudgeReport.com. Reporter tells MSNBC Obama administration most hostile to media in history of U.S. Well, that's, that's racist. Plus, Obama built the Internet and uh, the uh, media, so he's allowed to do what he wants. Racist. Also, Canadian police arrest man for photographing cop car as daughter... Records chilling scene. Yeah, cops worldwide don't like slaves taping them. Three times as many Americans supported King George during Revolutionary War than support Congress today. That's a key article I'm going to be covering. Uh, 15 signs that we are near the peak of an absolute massive stock market bubble. And Nobel Prize winning economists are saying get ready for implosion. Amazon unveils plans for deliveries by drone. Can't make that up. They say you'll get it delivered within 30 minutes by drone. I thought Storks delivered Amazon packages. Also, uh, more coming up. Congress has a 6% approval rating. I'll tell you what that means on the other side. Are we choosing our own destiny, or has it been pre-selected for us? As we've moved through history, every great leader has had to understand the potential of information. Billions of dollars have been spent privately and publicly looking at how to tap into your psyche. From compulsory state education to the Hollywood media brainwashing machine, we are kept in perpetual bondage to the ideas that shape our actions. When somebody obscures that feedback loop between you observing and testing it out and verifying it, they can take total control of your awareness. All of this is happening so fast, you need to be ahead of the game. How to engineer the opinion of the American people so that they would not only endorse, but demand a war. Right oh, there's another one. Another plane just hit. State of mind, because there's a war on for your mind. Get your copy of State of Mind, the movie, at InfoWars.com. And remember, every order at InfoWarsStore.com receives a free citizen rulebook. Look, it comes down to this. The social engineers of the planet are anti-human, they think of you as idiots, and they do everything they can to dumb you down so that you're not involved in the decision-making process. And then all these globalists do is then fight with each other all day. And thank God, that's one of the few things holding back total world government, is that they're all jealous of each other's power historically, and so they're never able to get total control into place. But they're getting very, very close. We're not under world government yet. We're just under the first stages of what they're trying to create that will be a completely micromanaged technocracy running every facet of your life and slowly turning off the economy.
The good news is, and I cannot express to folks how good the news is, that over the weekend, Gallup, one of the most respected polling agencies out there, came out with a scientific poll showing a 6%, we'll put that on screen for TV viewers, 6% approval rating for Congress. Now, there's still like a 35 or 33, depending on which poll you look at, for Obama, because he's a personality who's connected with his victims uh, who are still being conned by Kind of like folks watch the state lottery where the pretty lady spins the wheel and actually thinks the lottery lady's their friend because she's smiling at them. These are victims. These are like two-year-old children that get tricked to get in the van with a pedophile because he says they have candy. Uh, I mean, these are very sad people. But the general public, when it thinks of government, it thinks of Congress, six percent approval rating i don't know of any government in history and i've studied a lot of history that has only had six percent approval this government is bankrupt morally and financially this government is foreign run and hijacked this government is publicly defunct and fraudulent and all it's doing is buying billions more bullets thousands more armored vehicles a month more blimps, more drones, more training. And they're so disconnected from reality, all their training manuals, on record, there's hundreds of them that are public. They used to have this stuff secretly. Now they publish it at FBI.gov, where they badmouth the founding fathers, the Gadsden flag, 1776. Of course vampires are scared of high noon, holy water, garlic, and wooden steaks. Everything they demonize is what is our salvation. Family, private property, due process, self-defense. And then they sit there and they scapegoat capitalism for the reason we're going to hell in a handbasket. When, ladies and gentlemen, by every yardstick, we are a socialist nation. And the worst kind. Not some fair Northern European socialism which is bad enough because it gets rid of individualism, but where they actually redistribute the wealth, like you pay in 75% taxes, but you actually get benefits back. No, 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 no. They run the government on debt and take all the actual money and give it to offshore corporations. All of it. All of it. Ronald Reagan's own commission, 1981, found every cent of income tax goes to pay the debt. And they've got it all actuaried out where we only get deeper in debt. This is how we're being enslaved. Everyone knows you can pay for 19 years on a farm. And they put little clauses in there. The big banks do. If you don't go to a good bank, a local bank usually is better because they live there. They'll try in the 20th year of the note to call it all in and take your property. That's why farmers always pile up their money and wait for the 19th, 20th year. Folks, that's what they want. The banks are loaning out fiat entries in a ballot sheet, in a folder, now in a computer, zeros and ones, literally. They want your property. They want your capacity to produce property. They want your soul. They want it all. You're like, why are they so evil? They're in power because they have that nature. And if you know there's a corrupt system and fight it, you'll historically still be beaten, as Thomas Jefferson said. Even if you know about liberty and defend it, you probably can't keep it. It's so rare. America's never been perfect. It's been a journey in an attempt to find liberty, in an attempt to secure greater evolutions of freedom. True liberalism, the antithesis of everything Obama and his cohort or, cohorts are. Just as the Democrats are even having to admit on CNN to keep their credibility, Obama's a tyrant. Of course he's a tyrant. Too late. People don't trust you anymore. We're going to play that clip. Go to your phone calls and more coming up in the next segment. 800-259-9231. First time callers today. But this is good news, folks, that 94% of Americans know the government is bankrupt and evil. Everything we said came true. By the way, I said this last night on the Sunday radio show, 4 to 6 p.m., only because nine times out of ten it's the case. The United States on record for more than 50 years has done almost zero maintenance 
uh, on the railways and has not really built any new railways uh, in this country. Other trains routinely go over 250 miles an hour in Japan and Germany and France, uh, and their freight moves at over 100 miles an hour. My grandmother, getting her master's degree, uh, would go three times a week from Teague, Texas, in East Texas, 100 miles to Houston in the morning, and then back in the evening, and the train went over 120 miles an hour in the early 1950s. Now, if trains go above about 45 miles an hour, they begin rattling and gyrating because they don't put in new track. They don't put in new uh, rail beds. I was talking to one of our crew members, CJ, and he said during the flooding in Austin a few weeks ago that he saw the train by his house completely washed out with no railroad ties and no gravel. And that the train was shooting by at 45 miles an hour or so. And I know because I've got family that had been railroaders, management, the whole nine yards, working at railroads, you name it. So that's why I know a little bit about railroads. Not that much, but more than the average person. And CJ seems to know what he's talking about as well. But he said it was flying over on just the metal rails. Just the steel rails. And this is indicative of what America is like. All the taxes, all the money go into select corporations, select groups. Everyone else is turned off. That's the problem with big government, folks, is that they distribute it where they want. And we have literally no infrastructure in this country. It's all been sent to only select corporate and industrial and academic and corporate combines. And I said yesterday, watch, they're going to try to blame the conductor. And now they're saying, well, witnesses said gravel was flying up on a troubled stretch of track in New York. That people that work for the railroad have been told to shut up. Don't complain about being on the track. And then they put Amtrak under pressure. And put other train services under pressure to go faster. This was a Bronx derailment. And so they fly off the rail beds. When my father worked for the railroad back in the early 1970s, they were horrible rail beds. He looks at them now and talks to railroaders he knows, and they say that the company, here's the key, the company corporate people say, you will get that train up to 60 miles an hour and you will get that delivered or you're going to lose your job. Just like a few years ago with BP, the BP executives in Houston gave orders from England that they were to dump water into a 30,000 super foot, 30,000 super deep well. 15,000 feet super deep, folks. They do 30,000 now. They were to literally go down 30,000 feet and don't dump concrete and proper mud, as they call it, in on top the shaft to keep it from blowing out under pressure. No, ladies and gentlemen, they told them you will dump seawater. And they had to fire two crews and relieve them and put them on helicopters. Two crews. This came out very early on. The media is like, we don't know what happened. They had to fire two crews. Where the chief engineers on the spot said, you cannot dump water on it. It will blow up. And the executives went, oh, I got an engineering degree. I say that that water will pressurize in between layers of concrete and mud, and it'll save us tens of millions of dollars in drilling products every few days, do it. They said, no, I'm not going to do it. It's going to blow up. Remove that team. Give the same order. I'm not doing it. Remove that team. Finally put a team in who got on a boat, wouldn't even get near it, and gave the workers orders. All right, do it. Then they pulled their boats back. Boom, blows up. What do you think you're going to do with natural gas and oil pressurized like that? It comes out so pressurizes, it explodes when it hits the surface, ladies and gentlemen. They pulled the, com the, the command ships back off the deep water horizon, and it blew up under orders. Now, you can say they did it as a false flag for some reason on purpose. I don't know if that's the case. They either did it on purpose or they thought they could suspend the rules of reality. So they're telling these different railroad, including passenger railroad groups. My dad has told me, I thought, y'all yeah, thinking about taking the kids on an Amtrak trip out west so they could see the country. He goes, don't do that. Don't do that. Those, no, those dangerous rails. Da da it, 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 it's the most dangerous thing you can do is to get on a passenger train in this country, ladies and gentlemen.
unless it's some local city line they just put in. I'm telling you, do not get on the railways in this country, okay? They are rotting. CJ, tell folks what you saw a few weeks ago. Uh, there have been about seven inches of rain in Lawn the last week, and I drove by the rails outside of uh, my neighborhood, and it was a good 25, 30 feet of rail that the gravel had been completely washed out from underneath. There was nothing but uh, steel rail and... Um, Every other tie was was busted off, and they were still running freight over it. They fixed it about two days later, but uh, it doesn't seem like something safe. And in the old days, they would, because I grew up next to a railroad track in Ronquil, Texas. Our house was up on the top of a hill by the lake. There was a railroad track. In the past, they would just stop the train. A few hours later, a truck that rides on rails would show up, and they would fix it with a team. And that would just be the way it was. Now they just don't care. And see, it's the same thing with nuclear reactors now, folks. The system doesn't care. They had big disasters in the 40s, 50s, 60s they covered up, but nothing statistically like it is now. 91% of the 420-plus reactors are leaking heavily now. And they just have the governments raise the level and say it's safe. In fact, when you pull me that Fox News article and the AP about the radioactive wave two years later finally hitting the West Coast, and what's the EPA's answer? They go, oh, it's safe. Don't worry about it. Again, folks, the establishment has gone insane. The establishment has gone mentally ill bonkerville. And that's what I keep trying to get across to you is that they might start a nuclear war with China or Russia. They might do anything. They might release a bioweapon. Who knows with these crazy people? And I've never been a big incompetence theory type guy that so many high-level experts said, look, they are evil, they are organized, but there's not one big spider at the center. There's a bunch of spiders trying to get control. They spin the same type of webs, so it looks like it's a unified system, and they want a unified system, but these people are insane. And they only think they're in control. And the more you think you're in control, the less you're in control. The best laid plans of mice and men often go awry. I knew I was forgetting something during the break, too. Guys, remind me at the next break to go find that quote on jurisprudence. It's a really good quote. I looked it up. It's an accurate quote. I want to look it up, have you be able to pull it up before I get to that. I'm going to go to your phone calls here in a moment and then uh, take calls into the next hour. And then I've got all this other news I haven't covered. But here's the deal. In the headlines, they're getting ready to try to jail some poor guy that followed orders and drove on bad track. Because they're not going to say the system won't fix the track. They're not going to blame it on the mayor of New York, who was reportedly over this stretch of tra track, who flies on jet copter, the most expensive helicopter in the world, and private jets made off insider money on the stock market. Uh, but Bloomberg and Bermuda during derailment playing golf. See, for them, it's like flying to Bermuda. All they see is the most luscious resorts. All they see is the finest areas. They're just in cocooned in billions of stolen money with armed bodyguards all around them. They don't ride on the ratty rails. Let me tell you, I, I've been on the New York subway. I guess it was last year I was in New York, and I'd been there before many times. And I'm like, man, this is scary. The train is flying around on the rails. And it was the same thing in London. Horrible, just flying around. In Japan, totally smooth, 250 miles an hour. In Germany and France. Why? Because the U.S. and England are managed by the very same globalists, ladies and gentlemen. They don't want you to have art museums. They don't want you to have culture. They don't want you to have anything. You understand that? When they're done, you're going to have nothing. While they talk about how they're liberal and, oh, want you to have welfare and want you to, while they get rid of any economy you could have ever had. That's why they're so disgusting. And now they're getting ready to try to charge the people driving the train. The feds and people are saying, we're not going to listen to eyewitnesses about the track rattling or rocks flying up. The rails went out. They leaned over to the side, folks. The rails went out. 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 Doesn't matter, though. They're, they said the black boxes are being looked at and it might be the conductor. You know, the brakes weren't working properly. Bull crap. They've got multiple brakes on those trains. The train wasn't even going fast. This country is rotting. Excuse me, excuse me, folks, I just get angry.
but they cannot admit the system isn't fixing the railways. They're not fixing anything. Things are falling apart. Because why should they care if there's an economy that works and operates? They're just going to steal all the money anyways. That's why banks are getting ready to charge you to have deposits and are going to start just taking taxes, private taxes to them right out of your bank accounts. Why not? They've gotten away with everything else. You put up with double, triple, quadruple prices for health care paid to foreign banks that own insurance companies. Well, why not just take your bank account? You'll put up with anything. You'll put up if you're camping somewhere with a game warden jumping out, even when you don't even have guns or aren't hunting, and start bossing you around. I can't go to the National Seashore without weirdos coming over to us and everybody else camping and harassing us and bugging their eyes out. And I'm finally like, stop bugging your eyes out at me. Stop asking me if I'm a criminal, you damn freak. You're the criminal, you dirtbag scum. You're run by a criminal government that knows it's gotten away with bloody murder and is just wanting to keep the public down. And all that's going to do is finally wake them up. Excuse me, I'm in a bad mood, and I apologize I'm using mild verbiages. I'm going to stop right now. I'm going to knock it off right now. I just don't like being treated like a slave. I don't like going into slavery. I don't like seeing the public so dumbed down, completely obsessed with every mindless idiot issue you can imagine. In fact, you guys printed me the top 10 Bing searches. I was going to give it to the reporters. You guys print me that again? I was walking around with it and lost it. I said I'd go to your phone calls. I'm going to go to them. And then coming up, Nobel Prize economist warns of U.S. stock market bubbled. Really? 15 signs that we are near the peak of an absolutely massive stock market bubble. Going to cover that. Reporter tells MSNBC, Obama administration most hostile to the media in U.S. history. I said CNN. It's got the old CNN reporter on there. DHS Googling travelers before they enter the U.S., Amazon unveils plan for deliveries by drone. Migraines linked to plastic cups and bottles, gender bending chemical and packaging may trigger the attacks. I've been telling you that for 15 years being attacked is anti-gay because I also pointed out that it also uh, makes you uh, well become feminine. Just a fact. Uh, continuing, get ready to pay more online. Supremes refuse to hear internet tax case. Transgene escape, GMO spreading uncontrollably around the world. That is just some of what is coming up today. And, and that is only the tip of the iceberg that we have up on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. America doesn't have a lobby for freedom anymore. America doesn't have individualism where we won't stand for being treated like slaves. So if you go to the front page of DrudgeReport.com, it is Obama bowing to the Saudi king. And now it's come out in mainstream news that Saudi Arabia and China literally control what goes on our news and literally control what is allowed to be in movies. That's how controlled we are. They used our open society to come in and take over and then, and then make our freedoms that are our escape valve from their tyranny illegal. And that's what they're doing right now. They're declaring that Americans trying to be free and have a future is illegal. We're going to go to break, come back and go to Jeff, California, Brian, Bruce, Terry, and everybody else that's patiently holding and take calls right into the bottom of the next hour. Then I'm going to get to all of this other news. But since I mentioned it, here is that clip from MSNBC. I, I thought it's racist to criticize Obama and say he's a tyrant. I, I, I thought it's terrorist. I mean, I thought... But, but now they're saying that Obama administration, most hostile to media in U.S. history. Finally, truth coming out of them as they implode. Here it is. But we have an administration. Every president gets to the point where he dislikes the press. It's that simple. And every administration tries to manipulate the press. But this is the most hostile to the media that uh, has been in United States history. Not only do we have this thing where there's... Wait, you would go that far? I would go the that far. The most hostile in history. The most hostile because, first of all, we have the situation where they are, in fact, shutting out the press. What's happening is the dinosaurs don't have viewers anymore, so they're not needed. And they're going directly to total content Soviet management. And so these people are freaking out because they're not getting invited to the cocktail parties and feeling important like peacocks. They've now been thrown out in the cold. Hey, don't worry. Once the economy goes into full depression, you're not going to get anything, idiot. <laughs> you helped sell out the greatest country in the world, traitor.
Now you're going to get nothing but sorrow, weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Enjoy it. You earned it. You earned it. Benedict Arnold. Now we're going to break, coming back briefly. The new magazine is in. We sell it at cost. Big color, glossy December issue about the death of the dinosaur media and the police state, the attack on the Second Amendment. It's a great tool. Give a gift subscription. We have 35% off right now through Christmas to give gift subscriptions. 12 issues delivered to your friends and family's door. And that includes the shipping in the price of $39.95, 12 issues, plus some bumper stickers delivered to their door. Great way to wake somebody up. Give it to the police department, the library, your church, your school, your university, chancellor, info war. 12 color issues, $39.95, shipping included. That's at cost, actually below cost with the special. We've got at cost, ladies and gentlemen, so many other products that are meant to get the word out. Now, what funds us is great products like the nascent iodine. But we now have in stock the proprietary special form that I think is the most amazing health discovery I've ever made. And it's, it, 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 it's available right now at InfoWarsLife.com and our new Arabica coffee, Wake Up America coffee, available at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Try this coffee, and I assure you, you won't be disappointed. I want to hear your reviews. Now you can watch the InfoWars Nightly News streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show.